Okay, we have even more, but uh, the next one following left will be uh, slightly easier. So let's, I will do now from here, I will explain the DLL search order hijacking and asynchronous procedure call injection. Okay, and I do have a sample for the DLL search order uh, hijacking. And let's see, what is the DLL search order? So start with, let's say the, uh, if there is a notepad.exe, it says, okay, I'm going to use a kernel 32 and you know, Windows 32 that DLL, then Windows have actually priority, you know, from which directory you are gonna uh, search the DLL, you know, from. That's called a search, a DLL search order, right? So very first, it uh, search for the known DLL here first, right? And no DLL, uh, let me check, okay, no, how about let's go to the, uh, OS is easier to, checking the path, let's, you know, before even moving to, moving forward, let's say what here no DLL is, you know, the registry key is pointing at, okay. Okay, so do you see here, right? So it actually first it used this, you know, where this known DL, uh, known DL, um, I should just go back. Fine, okay. Okay, when, okay, let's go back. When, you know, for example, notepad.exe has, okay, I want to use, Connect 32 that DLL and use 32 that DLL. Then the Windows search and look up this known DLL registry key first. And as we see here, this is a known DLL. In this registry key, it checks there is a you know face to face DLL path. This is an environment variable, right? And from here. After the, uh, looking at this in the path, then he used you know, this DLL first. Basically, this DLL are supposed to be under this, you know, this DLL path. Okay, the lookup that uh, registry key first. Then after that, after that, it launched uh, it wrote DLLs from the directory from which where the application is loaded, but right, where the ESE is located, okay? Then it use a system32 directory, then system, this is a, for the 16-bit, 16, uh, 16 uh, this is a 16-bit system directories, and after that it use Windows directory, you see column Windows in general, right? Then it uh, then search the D, uh, DLS in the current working directory, right? Where this, you know, the executable being launched from, uh, as a you know, study, studying a path, current working directory. Then, then you use a path, a path that is listed in this environment variable, right? Now let's then see what will happening. Let's see. If there is some DLL that is not listed known DLL, however, it is located in the system 32, right? What attacker can do is you will want, you, uh, the malicious code will generate some DLLs into the, uh, the uh, path that would application actually located, right? Then this, since this directory will be, you know, referenced first, right? This DLL, 
uh, the DLA that is located here will be loaded. It will be for this one, System 32. And why do you think it's, it does that? You know, as you said, you know, some system may monitor if any DLA has been changed under the System 32 because any DLA under this here is important, right? So if some certain DLA is hidden here, right? And hidden as a not, you know, that non visible voice, if we had the same name here, right? Then the, you know, uh, kind of prevention would not work, right? Because it's not checking every directory. Right, that's just one way of doing it, and also it's a very effective way to uh, being uh, being consistent, but just you know it's not really not apparent basically, right? Any question? Okay. Oh, okay, okay, I have it, that explanation. So it's a some obfuscated way. Who will be persistent, right? And okay, another thing, the method what I explained, you know, app init DLL using it is a, a both category. It can be used as a maneuvering, and not only that, it's a bit persistent. So there is no you know, exact you know, distinction, right? One method, uh, one technique can be you know, uh, serve two purpose purposes, right? Okay, what I explained was just written uh, on the slide 51. Okay. Right, how about let's go to slide 52. Okay, asynchronous procedure called injection. So, okay, what is happening here is thread maintain a queue of, say, queue of basically a Functions this is basically wait until thread go into an like alertable state, which is like a sleep. So it's basically wait. Okay, I'm going to sleep, but wake me up. But once you know, uh, thread up. Uh, once the thread go into this any of this you know state, then you know. And if it has a queue of this APC calls, then at the time this you no know, procedure being called, only if this thread is go into alertable state. Okay, so what it means by the uh, uh, DLA injection is you can just, okay, I'm going to put, you know, a function belongs to this certain DLL, but I'm going to register into this, you know, APC queue, right? So when threads go to the basically sleep, then my you know, function will, will be called, which means my DLL will be loaded and will be executed, right? Any question? Okay. So, and then for this one is like okay, for the user space, this is just a core pattern, open thread, and Q, user APC. And from the kernel level, there's like a different calls uh, patterns. 